Welcome to the channel. If you're watching this video, you have found my channel, Four Legged Plague. I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time, and you'll notice that I didn't say, Welcome back to the channel, because this video is meant to be an introduction to anyone who has not ever come across this movement. This is the introduction, excuse me, the introduction to the anti-dog community. The title of this video is I Hate Dogs. I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time. I've been very busy. Um, things have not allowed for me to make this video. But unfortunately right now, my wife has COVID and she cannot go anywhere, nor can I. Even though I've tested negative, it's not safe for me to go anywhere because I've been exposed. So I, uh, I'm gonna have some time in the next couple of days to do nothing and not leave the house. And I'm gonna make this video because, um, because I think people who have never come across this movement they don't know what to think of us. They don't know why we hate dogs so much. They don't know how anyone could ever have the mentality, question the lifestyle of owning dogs. When there's something that is so widely accepted as just another way of life, there's nothing wrong with it. When you question what so many have accepted, there's going to be confusion, there's going to be questions, there's going to be a lot of dismissing. I would encourage anybody who knows somebody else, if you hate dogs and you'd like to introduce somebody to our movement, and that's what this is, it's a movement. If you would like to introduce somebody basically to how we in the anti-dog community uh, think and feel, I would highly recommend that uh, you share this video. So, welcome to the anti-dog community. So again, <clears throat> if you're new to this community, first of all, welcome. If you found this channel, I just want to say I appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to what someone like me has to say. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. As of this video, I'm 29 years old. I am, uh, I live in the state of Michigan in the United States. For work, I am a CNC machinist. I am a Christian, have been my entire life, and I am a husband. I went to public school I went to a trade school when I was in high school to take engineering design and machine technology and I also had a little bit of college. My hobbies are hunting, fishing, cooking, thrift shopping, and playing video games with my wife. I have a passion for firearms, reading, and teaching the Word of God, especially to children. Overall, I am a regular person, just like you. You and I may be different in some, if not many, ways. But the point is that I do not claim to be an expert in any field. I'm a regular guy. The way that I arrived at the conclusions which I stand by is that I have an open mind, I am observant of the world around me, and I have a fierce will to protect the innocent and those who are in my care. All I ask of you, if you're watching this, is to also keep an open mind. And before you click out of this video, or dismiss what I'm saying, I'd like to ask you <clears throat> to swish this message around in your mouth and taste it first. And then if you don't like it, or you feel I'm missing something, as a fellow human being, I would love to hear your respectful, intelligent thought, even if you disagree with what I'm saying. 
The name of my channel is Four-Legged Plague. The term plague is loosely defined as an infectious disease that affects humans and animals. Now, my, it is my personal belief that dogs as they exist currently are a plague on human society. Similar to diseases, ideas can also be infectious and spread like a plague from one person to another. On my channel, I focus in depth on why I do not believe that dogs belong in human territory and should not exist in the way that they exist right now. I think it would be for the good of mankind if we did not if we did not rely on dogs, provide for dogs, or value them in any way other than maybe possibly for their meat as food. The anti-dog community is comprised of a diverse multitude of people from all different backgrounds. Black and white, Hispanic and Latino, and Asian, European. We have men and women alike, all different sexual orientations. We have left-wingers and right-wingers and centrists. There are people whose eyes have been opened from every corner of the globe. The anti-dog community is a group of people who despite their differences have faith in and want to work together to better humanity which is really what an ideal society would like would look like a society which would work together for the greater good despite differences i am merely one of these people and i am honored to be part of this movement and once again if you're someone who has never heard of or seen this community, I'm humbled to have your attention, and I promise I won't waste your time. So, this movement is not a joke. If you haven't already figured it out from everything I've already said, I want to make it clear that this is not a joke. I've seen it said that some people think that we are people who just hate dogs for petty reasons. They dismiss us. They think we are just angry because dogs are, we, we think dogs are ugly, or we have a phobia of dogs, or that something is just inherently wrong with us. I've seen it on many pages that people also think that we're just trolling, or that we do this for attention or for money, or just to have a controversial opinion, you know. There are many examples of other things where people get together and talk about how much they hate something for sport. Like the news, for example. You got a whole group of people that want to get together and talk about how they're right and everybody else is wrong and how could, how could uh, the person of the opposite opinion possibly be so foolish? But even if the people on the news don't actually feel the way that they appear to feel they're getting paid money to say what they're saying that's the motivation if they stopped getting paid they wouldn't come to work to argue to debate to discuss that's their motivation they're getting paid to say what they're saying whether or not they even agree with it this however is not one of those instances we hate dogs, and we're not kidding. Just for some clarification, I do not hate dog owners. I cannot speak on behalf of others, but my mission statement here at this channel is to love the sinner and hate the dog. I do not hate someone just because they own a dog. I think owning a dog is a horribly unwise thing to do, and in many cases it is criminal, especially large dogs that are being brought around others, and that goes double for bringing them around children and babies. That goes double for that. But my take on this battle is because I love people, I want to see people grow and make choices for their own good, as well as the good of those around them. I do not hate dog owners, nor, and I want to stress this, 
nor do I just hate dogs which were raised wrong, or just hate humans doing things with dogs that they shouldn't be doing. I hate dogs. It is the dog that I hate. Again, before I approach the meat of this presentation, this is going to be a pretty long video, because this is a rundown, I think, of how the anti-dog community feels. So we're going to approach several topics. So if you're not prepared for that, then maybe take this video in several, uh, several sittings. But before I approach the meat of this presentation, I want you to remember, okay, I am not a hateful person. I am not some sort of unique expert who has studied at these dog academies or has these credentials. I'm not an expert. I also wasn't attacked by a puppy when I was a kid. I don't have some sort of psychological trauma associated with dogs. I do not have anything that keeps me from thinking clearly, engaging in discussion, or from, con from, uh, from considering the opinions of others, even if they are different slightly from my own. With that being said, once again, I implore you to keep an open mind as I dive into this and consider this, the viewpoint of someone who researches this subject and does this on a regular basis has a point that you may not be aware of and could potentially benefit from. These are the reasons, pretty much in order of importance, why I and why we hate dogs. Reason number one, dogs attack people. I'm going to read a quote from the CDC website, okay? More than 4.5 million people are bitten by dogs each year in 365 days, each year in the United States. That doesn't include England or any of these other countries. More than 4.5 million people have been by dogs each year in the United States. And more than 800,000 receive medical attention for dog bites, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. At least half of those bitten are children. Again, that is according to the CDC. And whether you trust the CDC or not, they are not an anti-dog organization. They don't conspire to raise the numbers or speak falsely of the numbers of dog attacks. In fact, this number is more than likely grossly underreported because not everyone who gets bitten by a dog is going to report it, you know, because they, they might think, well, if I report it, the dog is going to get put down and I can't, I can't handle that. AVMA.org also says, Children are the most common victims of dog bites and are far more likely to be severely injured. Most dog bites affecting young children occur during everyday activities and while interacting with familiar dogs. Any dog can bite, big or small, male or female, young or old. Even the cuddliest fuzziest, sweetest pet can bite if provoked. Now right there, we are told by the CDC and the AVMA that most of the time people are attacked by their own dog or a familiar dog, and it's while they're doing normal everyday human activities. In other words, not trying to provoke the dog. And as you see in this picture, you've got a, a young lady who has taken multiple pictures with her dogs, and these two dogs killed her. Dogs are predators by nature. This is a fact. They are meat-eating animals that in the wild have to kill prey or scavenge the carcasses of already dead animals in order to survive. All dogs, regardless of size, retain sharp teeth and the instinct to kill. Larger dogs are capable of inflicting lethal damage to humans. 
Humans do not control dogs because we are all so physically superior to them, but because as a whole we manipulate them with food. Even dogs that are never aggressive only obey humans because they've been conditioned with food. And it is in their own best interest. It is the path of least resistance not to bite the hand that feeds them. However, again, every single day, people are killed, mauled, and disfigured all over the world by the family dogs which they raised with love. And because of the knowledge and availability of knowledge of this fact, placing yourself and especially your children in the way of potential harm is incredibly foolish in a world that is already filled with danger. Right? It's a dangerous world out there. To leave it up to the dog whether your child ends up looking like the person in this photo is by definition child endangerment. Even if the dog was somehow provoked, which again, according to the Center for Disease Control and the American Veterinary Medical Association, attacks are again usually while performing normal human activities, things that we as humans do. It is never okay for an animal to attack a person in their own home. Never. Bringing a large meat-eating predator into your home is by definition self and child endangerment. People who get charged with the crime of child, enda child endangerment can spend up to six years in prison. Leaving your safety in the hands of something that has the tools it needs to rip and tear apart meat and has a mind of its own and you cannot communicate with that thing with language, that is criminal. And this young lady, again here, she had her scalp ripped off and was bitten in the arms to the point of needing them both amputated. Do you think that this was worth it for dogs? I, I always, I always want to ask people that question. Was it worth it for dogs that you have to live the rest of your life disfigured? And all of the all of the negative things that come with being physically disfigured. Whether that be um, just a minor inconvenience up to loss of function of a limb or not being able to find someone to have a life with due to the the um, the disfigurement of your body, of your face, of the, the rest of your body. Was it worth it for dogs? The reason number one is dogs attack people. Reason number two. Dogs take advantage of humans. Now, if someone you knew told you that they loved you, even that they loved you unconditionally, and even if you believed they were telling the truth, you would expect them to contribute something if they wanted to live the rest of their, of their life in your house. Aside from children who are not capable of holding down a job or contributing a serious workload or someone who became physically crippled, you wouldn't simply let someone move into your home, let them say, I love you, and then provide for them hand and foot until they pass away. However, because dogs manipulate the same instincts that we as humans have to take care of a helpless living thing, <clears throat> many people see their dog's inability to tell the difference between right and wrong, their low intellect, and their helplessness as innocence and they believe that the dog loves them just as they are. And for some reason, this love, what they interpret as love, is enough for them to overlook the fact that this creature is so mutated and food-obsessed that it could not possibly be capable 
of loving them. It could not possibly love them in the way that humans love one another. They consider their dog their baby and will refer to them often as siblings to their biological children. The behavior which dogs exhibit, that dog owners see as love, again, is nothing more than the conditioned instinct the dog has to beg for food from its master and to secure the source of food. The entirety of the relationship which the human dog owner believes is unconditional love is actually a manipulation. The human feeds the dog and in return the dog is obsessed with the presence of that human. Obsessed with the presence of a food source. Dogs manipulate humans for a lifetime of free food, shelter, health care, and protection from harm. Reason number three. Dogs carry diseases and parasites which can spread to humans. According to the World Health Organization, a zoonosis is an infectious disease that has jumped from a non-human animal to humans. Zoonotic pathogens, oh, excuse me, zoonotic pathogens may be bacterial, like anthrax, viral, like COVID-19, or parasitic, like hookworms, or may involve unconventional agents and can spread to humans through direct contact or through food, water, or the environment. They represent a major public health problem around the world due to our close relationship with animals in agriculture as companions and in the natural environment. Zoonoses can also cause disruptions in the production and trade of animal products for food and other uses. That is according to the World Health Organization. As you can see in this picture here, if you go with me to this picture, the dog, which always has its nose to the ground looking for food, sniffing around, can pick up these parasites. This is an actual picture showing mouth parts of a dog hookworm. These microscopic hookworms are thin, short parasites of the intestinal tract. It is very uncommon to see the adult worms passed in stool. I'm not even going to try and read that. Is that something that you want hanging around inside of your body? This worm which you can you can um you can be infected with this worm through your skin if a dog passes this parasite through their feces and you walk on the ground where the feces was you can get these parasites through your skin simply by walking on the ground where the dog defecated If humans did not have vaccines, antibiotics, dewormer meds, and all sorts of advancements in healthcare, again, they would be exposed to everything that a dog would naturally carry. However, even with regular checkups, if a dog spends any length of time outside, it can pick up a whole plethora of parasites while sniffing and looking around with its nose in the dirt. If a dog picks up these parasites, and at any point in time licks its owner in the face, the owner will now be infected with these parasites. On top of parasites, dogs have germs that are native to their mouth and gut that under normal circumstances, if a human comes into contact with, their immune system can simply beat. But immunocompromised people who are just as likely, if not more likely, to own dogs as any other demographic of people, if these people who are immunocompromised come into contact with these bacteria, they can become infected by these bacteria, which are often resistant to antibiotics. Among these, a few are rabies, campylobacter, capnocytophaga, MRSA, 
brucella, and salmonella, just to name a few. People with dogs are constantly exposing themselves, and really those around them, to disease and parasites, which would not be present if the dog was not there. As you can see in this picture, this is a capnocytophaga infection, which this man got from a lick from his dog. It caused a blood infection that ate away his extremities, requiring all four of his limbs to be amputated. Reason number four, <clears throat> they bark nonstop. According to dog experts, dogs have all their special little different reasons for barking. There are a million reasons why dogs bark. Everything from being happy to sad, scared to excited, just down to being bored. Many of the so-called experts have basically admitted we don't know why dogs bark. Unlike cats, rabbits, or other common household pets, which are almost always silent, other than the occasional meow or yowl or whatever noise a rabbit makes, dogs bark every single day unless they are prevented from doing so through rigorous training, vocal cord removal, or noise-activated shock collars, which many people believe is inhumane. It's inhumane to keep a frickin' dog in your place of living. Not only is excessive dog barking annoying, but according to cityofkeok.uk.org, excessive noise or loudness not only disturbs the peace, but also creates a health hazard. An average-sized dog barks at 120 decibels. Damage to the human ear can occur at 85 decibels. Therefore, a continually barking dog can cause stress and loss of sleep, and, and it can cause hearing damage. There are no other animals that disturb the peace with loud, irritating noises. Get out of here. The way dogs do. And despite whatever reason the dog thought that it had for barking, it is not okay for a mutant animal to make noise pollution in human territory just because it doesn't understand. Not being able to understand. That is... Um, not being able to understand that it's not okay to make senseless, never-ending noise is another reason why dogs don't belong in human territory. Reason number five. <clears throat> People have sex with dogs. This is the part that is not fun to talk about. It's not fun to talk about any of these other ones, but this is the one where most people are going to click away and think I'm crazy. Stick with me. If you haven't already clicked out of here, stick with me. Because you have to hear this. You have to hear this message before you get out of here. Anyone who isn't already aware of it. I'm sorry I have to be the one to expose you to this fact. There are lots of people who have sex with dogs, among other animals, and it is common with both men and women. So you're probably thinking, okay, how common can this really be? How common is bestiality? Well, to quote from an article from News24.com, the largest such site, Beast Forum, has over 1.2 million registered members at the time of writing as well as more than that number again in unregistered visitors. So, at the time that this article was written, 2.4 million people are visitors and members of a a website that is dedicated to beast, people who are involved in bestiality. Again, quoting, the forum has boards where members can share tips on getting their animals to participate, as well as post pictures and videos of their sexual experiences with the animals. These discussion boards are bracingly open and descriptive. 
Almost all of the forum's boards are updated with new posts daily, and the general topics board alone receives dozens of posts every day. The majority of these posts are well-written, coherent, and spark spirited conversation and suggestions. This niche is not simply reserved for rural or uneducated people. These people are bank managers, physiotherapists, and teachers, and there are lots of them. So what this article is saying is that the people who are having relations with animals, dogs really, are not a bunch of sheep shaggers out in a field, or farmers that spend too much time in the barn. They are doctors, lawyers, construction workers, otherwise normal people. And it is more than likely you know someone who has had relations with their dog. Ask yourself, can you think of anyone you know? Single woman or man who is absolutely nuts about their dogs. Do they allow their dog to lick them in the face? And do they kiss all over the dog? You have to ask the question, if this person behaved this way towards a person of the opposite sex, would it be considered sexual or intimate? And, if they love that dog enough to act that way in front of you, if the dog attempted to lick them elsewhere when no one else was around, do you really believe that they would stop the dog? Do you really believe that they would refuse the dog's advances? Again, keep in mind, the number of people on that forum only account for a fraction of the people who do these, do these things with their dogs. Because for every person who is open and descriptive about their actions, there are way more people who are too afraid of getting caught to admit what they're doing to someone else. To give you, okay, <clears throat> I, gotta, I gotta give a, a shout out to I Hate Dogs, the uh, most popular anti-dog channel on YouTube as of this writing. I gotta give a shout out. To give you a mental picture of how common it is for people to have sex with their dogs, I'm going to paraphrase a quote taken from a video from the YouTube channel, I Hate Dogs. In his video, several people, uh, I want to say it's called, several people have, several dog owners have had sex with their dogs. It's his number one viewed video if you want to look it up. Uh, I'll try and link it in the description below. But to paraphrase from uh, his video, okay. The number one selling vehicle in 2015 was the Toyota Corolla. This is worldwide, not just the U.S. In 2015, Toyota sold 1.3 million Corollas. How often do you see a Toyota Corolla when you're just out and about? You see several of them. So you have to understand how popular it is that these sick dog lovers have sexual intercourse with their dogs, unquote. In other words, to put it into perspective, as often as you see a Toyota Corolla on the road of any particular year, you have seen someone who is secretly on a website about having their sexual relations behind closed doors with a dog. And I'm not joking. I didn't make this up. Reason number six. This one's a little bit more controversial, but, I mean, everything that I've just said is going to be controversial to some people. Reason number six. People who use therapy dogs, who use dogs in general, though, cannot overcome their personal struggles. When people have pain, stress, or hardship to deal with, they often use something to medicate themselves to get a dopamine hit to make the pain go away, or at least lessen the pain. For some, it's food. Nothing like a hot pizza or some fried chicken and a cold beverage on a Friday night after a really hard work week, you know? We all like to relax, we all like to sit down, have something to eat, have a beer, maybe watch a little TV. Nothing like, you know, 
relaxing and having a good meal. Some people get into other things to relieve stress, like cigarettes or alcohol, or in even more serious cases, they get addicted to things like heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, or, or you know, a wide variety of drugs that exist out there. When people come off of some of these drugs, if they don't have something to help them level out their brain chemistry, they can die if they try to quit cold turkey. Like for example, if you become an alcoholic, alcohol is a depressant. And if you stop drinking alcohol after becoming an alcoholic, your brain, the chemistry in your brain has balanced out to accommodate for being slowed down. And if you remove that element that slows your brain activity down, you will become so overstimulated that you'll have seizures. There are drugs like methadone that are prescribed to help people quit and wean themselves off of street drugs while at the same time help prevent serious withdrawal symptoms. The aim of methadone maintenance treatment is to help you reduce your illicit drug use. What will happen, and this is really unfortunate, but what will happen is that people who are dealing with some sort of mental disorder, whether it be PTSD, antisocial personality disorder, or some sort of past trauma, they get encouraged to get a therapy dog, right? A therapy dog. A therapy dog is described as a dog that is trained to provide affection, comfort, and support to people, often in settings such as hospitals, retirement homes, nursing homes, schools, libraries, hospices, or disaster areas. The problem with this is that if someone is dealing with a mental disorder or trauma that causes them to be antisocial, to distrust in other human beings for fear of harm. Giving them a dog and convincing them that it provides anything for them, let alone affection, comfort, and support, which it isn't capable of doing because it's just a dog. And any of those things that take place will only take place in that person's head. Uh, this will only draw them deeper into their distrust for other humans. They will become hooked on the drug which they began taking to deal with their problems. Therapy dogs are a drug equivalent in cost and in negative psychological consequences to the user. Instead of dealing with humans, you deal with dogs and plunge yourself further into your problem. A dog cannot be medicine. Reason number seven. They are an enormous, uh, they cost a fortune, and they are an enormous waste of resources. According to the American Kennel Club, the cost of owning a dog for its lifetime, depending on a number of factors, including breed, size, and services required, can be over $15,000 per dog. And, you know, that doesn't include if... The dog eats a strip of carpet or a pack of underwear and needs surgery to have that indigestible item removed from their digest digestive tract. To give you an idea of what you could do with that kind of money, if the average life expectancy of a small dog is 15 years, if all you did was take that money and bought $15,000 worth of gold, gold has gone from $645 an ounce in 2007 to $1,770 an ounce here in the year 2022 when this video is being made. You would have almost tripled your money if you invested that money in something as simple as gold rather than in a mutant that spreads diseases, begs for food, and attacks people at a higher rate than any other living creature. And you got to remember, don't live in a fantasy world. Resources in this world are not infinite. You know, we got food shortages, we got oil shortages, we got 
parts shortages on random different things. There's chip shortages. There's going to be electricity so shortages. Resources in this world are not infinite. And the amount of time, effort, and money spent on these things, these mutants, would be spent much more wisely on humans than on a creature that was put on this earth to be a scavenger. Just to eat. Gotta run and find some food. The same in final purpose as a fly, a carp, or a vulture. An animal that eats dead carcasses on the side of the road. So again, to sum it up, those are not all of completely the reasons, but to sum up how we in the dog anti-dog community feel. A dog is not a live teddy bear. A companion capable of love. Part of the family. Or a, re a replacement for slash addition to human physical, emotional, emotional, or sexual interaction. It cannot contribute anything. It is not valuable on its own. It is not valuable if it is accompanied by other humans and human interaction. It is, at its core, a disease-spreading, loud, mentally dysfunctional, violent, mutated, carcass-scavenging animal that you have to condition with food not to do the things that it would naturally do in order to bring it into your home, and even then it can snap without warning. If you didn't give dogs medicine, training with food, grooming, endless amounts of attention, the smaller, less capable ones would all starve and die if they lived outside. They would all starve and die or be eaten and killed by natural animals. And the bigger, more aggressive ones would live outside. They'd eat out of your garbage and herds of them would roam the streets and they would attack people on a regular basis the way they do in countries like India, which they have an enormous problem with vicious stray dogs. It's estimated that there are 30 million stray dogs in India. And India, what a shock, has the world's highest rabies death rate. The dog will rely for the entirety of its life for food, shelter, health care, and protection from humans. Humans have nothing to gain and everything to lose by keeping dogs in society. And the longer we portray this narrative that dogs love unconditionally, don't judge, and will love their owner no matter what, the more damage we're doing to ourselves. If anything I have said here was offensive to you, please remember that everything I have said is based on facts, not emotion or perception which so many of the supposed benefits of dogs rely on. The benefits that dogs are supposed to provide are merely perceptions of the one who is participating. It's not my opinion that dogs are what they are. It is a fact they are what they are. And the only thing you can do upon gaining this information is either accept it and act or do nothing. I hope that my words have reached you and my information will nag you like an itch until you are forced to act. But if you take in all of this information and you decide to do nothing, that's fine. Just don't be shocked or surprised when people around you are disgusted, appalled, and sickened by your dog and by your behavior. Don't be surprised when people around you refuse to enter your home because they don't want to expose themselves to dander, slobber, potential disease and parasites, and the possibility of mutilation. Don't be surprised if people hate your dog. So, that's the video. If you haven't, um, gosh, these ads.
Now you know what the anti-dog community is all about. I would encourage you to subscribe to all of the various anti-dog channels. There's tons of information to be had out there. I'm on merely one channel and by no means am I the most educated or the most talented. I would encourage you to subscribe to I Hate Dogs. I would encourage you to subscribe to Chef Mutt Meat, to I, um, to Dogs Are Garbage, aka Ashley, to Canine Constrictor, to Vasectomy Fail. Um, there are a whole bunch of other anti-dog channels. All you have to do is look if you want to find them. But, again, welcome to the anti-dog community. This is how we feel. This is a sum, a sum up of the general basis of how we all feel. I want to thank you once again for your time. And all of my, support, <clears throat> my supporters, remember to love the sinner and hate the dog.